Chapter 11, Supply Chain Management. This chapter focuses on supply chain management. We will discuss global supply chain issues, sourcing decisions, and logistics management. We will include make versus buy decisions and benchmarking. This flow diagram shows an example supply chain. You can see the flow of materials from various suppliers, brewing and distribution. Note the dollar amounts associated with each step. A six pack of beer selling for $6.99 costs the distributor only $3.36 and uses $1.42 in materials. When we manage the supply chain, we need to consider the end-to-end -end process. The goal is to make the entire supply chain competitive with the ultimate customer in mind. Remember that the only source of income for the entire supply chain is the ultimate customer at the end of the chain. It is essential that all organizations that make up the supply chain share a common vision and strategy. Without a common approach, it will be difficult to link the methods and processes for the common good of individual suppliers, manufacturers, and distributors. Here is a typical flow diagram for a supply chain. We start from the left and finish with the ultimate customer on the right. Note that material and credit flow to the right while schedule, orders, and cash flow to the left. Information must be shared in both directions. This slide shows supply chain configurations for Amazon, Walmart, and Boeing. Note the similarities and differences. Amazon and Walmart supply chains do not include manufacturing, while Boeing ships direct to customer without a distribution segment. All members of the supply chain must be in alignment and balanced. If anyone fails to meet the needs of the customer, the entire supply chain will be affected. To effectively manage the supply chain, we must quantify cost, quality, delivery, and customer responsiveness. For the supply chain to be successful, the strategy of the member organizations must be in alignment. Here we see some possible local strategies that support the overall supply chain. For example, for a low-cost supply chain strategy, inventory must be kept to a minimum and the primary supplier's selection criterion will be cost. You can see how the other strategies align. Think of a supply chain that your organization might be part of. What is the overall strategy and is your company in alignment? In this table we can see the impact of supply chain costs. Supply chain costs make up a major portion of the overall sales price. We see restaurants at the low end with 35% and petroleum at the high end with 79% of sales tied up in the supply chain. Here we see an example of a furniture store considering three different strategies. You can see that in this case the supply chain strategy generates the highest profit for a given sales level. As stated, the supply chain strategy must be in alignment with the organization's core mission. At the high level the supply chain strategy can be centralized or decentralized and vary based upon product volume. At the supplier level, we must decide how many suppliers will be considered, the level of vertical integration, and how we will handle logistics and integration of information systems to facilitate data sharing. When you work with different suppliers, will your negotiation strategy be one of partnership or pitting one against the other? Will you vertically integrate key suppliers or will you form a loose coalition among suppliers? The result may be a virtual company where different business organizations act like one big company. When dealing with lower priced commodity items, many suppliers are typically engaged. The goal is to create competition to get the best price. This results in a traditional purchasing model, not a partnership. Each company is independent and responsible for their own operation. Conversely, the few supplier strategy is focused on partnership between companies. Exclusive contracts are common with shared data and skills to enhance the overall result. The risk is that changing suppliers is very costly and disruptive. Kiritsu networks are strong coalitions of companies and fall between the strategies of few suppliers and full integration. Extensive sharing of data and expertise exists. Financing often comes from a single bank group. This is a long-term relationship. The partners within the Kiritsu network are highly dependent upon one another. A common decision is whether to make a given item within the company or buy it from an outside vendor. 
In addition, companies may decide to take an entire internal process and move it to an outside vendor. The company may gain from the specialized expertise of the external vendor while focusing on internal core competencies. What are your core competencies where you work? When outsourcing, companies must make sure that the outsourcing strategy is in alignment with the overall company mission. Different functions like accounting, logistics, and production may be outsourced. Examples may be found where almost every function has been outsourced by different companies. The outsourcing process starts with opportunity identification followed by the bid process to identify the best outsourcing partner. With make or buy decisions, a thorough analysis must be completed prior to deciding whether an item will remain internal or purchased. The advantages of remaining internal, make, are listed here. One of the long-term risks of buying the item from a supplier is that you may transfer core technology to the vendor and create a competitor. The advantages of buying an item from an external vendor are listed here. The goal is to leverage the volume, costs, capacity, and expertise of a third party. This may also be part of a business continuity plan where a third party can support production if your internal capability goes offline for some reason. A company can strengthen their pool of suppliers first by selecting the best suppliers. This may include supplier certification where the company verifies the qualifications of the supplier. Many companies also engage in supplier development. The goal is to work with the supplier to fill any gaps and bring the supplier into better alignment with the overall supply chain. Examples of this supplier development partnership are listed here. Negotiations with suppliers are an important step. Negotiators will use cost-based or cost-plus model, a market-based or published catalog, or competitive bidding, pitting suppliers against each other. Competitive bidding is not considered to be a win-win approach and is typically not used when a long-term partnership is sought. Contracting with a supplier establishes shared risk and benefits. This is a win-win approach where all members of the supply chain benefit. Most major organizations use a centralized purchasing approach to leverage higher volumes, develop supplier relationships, and make use of a highly skilled workforce. Excellent negotiators are highly valued in this organizational structure. With the ready availability of the Internet, e-procurement is common and in some cases required by some companies. Walmart, for example, requires suppliers to receive demand data electronically while providing fulfillment and billing data in return. Many suppliers provide online catalogs to facilitate purchasing and may participate in online auctions for commodity items. Here's an example of a weighted supplier evaluation method. The criteria for selection are listed on the left, each with its own weighting based upon the priority of that criterion. A given supplier would receive a score for each on a scale from 1 to 5. The weights are multiplied by the score and then summed to calculate the overall score for that supplier. The scores of different suppliers are compared to select the best partner. Vertical integration is the degree to which various members of the supply chain belong to the same company. Very early on, more companies were heavily integrated. Ford Motor, for example, made all their own components, sub-assemblies, and final assembly plants. Looking at the diagram, starting with the base company, represented by the black dot, we may integrate with key suppliers. This is backward integration. On the other hand, we might integrate with key distributors. This is forward integration. Integration choices must be thoroughly analyzed to see if the acquisition of a supplier or distributor adds to the profitability of the overall supply chain, enhances customer value, or adds to another key aspect of the company. Examples of backward integration include Apple owning the chip makers that supply key components, and International Paper owning their own harvesting and pulp making processes. Forward integration is found with Pepsi owning their own bottling plants, Apple owning their own retail stores, and International Paper owning end-user paper conversion processes. One method of integrating companies within a supply chain is through joint ventures. A joint venture is a cooperative enterprise entered by two or more businesses, entities for specific project or other business activity. The reason for a joint venture is usually some specific project. With joint ventures, both companies retain their individual identity. 
The goal is to leverage the strengths of the partners to reduce costs and enhance capability. A virtual company is a collection of organizations within the supply chain that form a loose confederation. This structure enables quick response to changing business conditions with lean performance, low investment, flexibility, and speed. Reliance on global supply chains has risk. Global politics and logistics challenges may reduce the value of the relationship. Language differences and currency valuation may also have an impact. Distance makes verification dis difficult as well. To mitigate these risks, several tactics may be applied. These include diversification, certification, and flexibility. There will be more variability with global shipments than local shipments. This calls for thorough planning and contingencies. Don't forget the importance of information flow across the supply chain. System security, redundancy, and backup are necessary. Technology is enhancing the ability to secure global shipments. Barcode and RFID scanning linked to global IT systems facilitate near real-time tracking. This data is used to optimize processes and identify security gaps. Supply chain issues include local optimization where each member of the supply chain focuses internally, adding safety stock to address perceived variability in the supply chain. Incentives can encourage suppliers to overproduce. Large lots that minimize shipping and production costs may also add excess inventory to the pipeline. One outcome of local optimization is the bullwhip effect. This occurs when each company along the supply chain adds its own buffer, which is passed along to the company upstream. The result is that a minor variation near the customer turns into large-scale variation for the suppliers at the start of the chain. To optimize the supply chain, we need to ensure accurate data that is openly shared to reduce uncertainty. Lot sizes are minimized with a single point of control for ordering. This requires a trusting relationship among the members of the supply chain. Vendor managed inventory is a common method where the vendor manages the inventory within their customer. For example, Walmart provides inventory data to key suppliers. It is up to the supplier to manage the inventory on Walmart's shelves to agree to levels. Other methods to enhance the supply chain include collaborative planning where representatives of multiple companies within a supply chain work together on a common plan, forecast, and replenishment process. This may include blanket orders where the initial setup of the agreement is completed with fulfillment orders released over time per the guidelines of the master blanket order. Postponement finalizes the product as late as possible in the supply chain. For example, Basic laptop computers are built and then finalized at the final distributor. At this point, components, country-specific power supplies, and customer-specific software are added. The Internet has enabled global data flow across the supply chain, including electronic ordering and funds transfer or payment. Dropshipping occurs when the manufacturer ships direct to the customer, bypassing the distribution channel. This method speeds delivery and reduces cost. Logistics management integrates purchasing, inventory, production, materials movement, and quality control. The goal is to improve efficiency, lower costs, and improve customer service. There are several available shipping systems. Trucking is common within the United States. This method is efficient, flexible, and low cost. The map shows that shipments from a location in southern Texas will reach the entire country in five days or less. Railroads and air freight offer two shipping alternatives. Rail is less expensive than trucking, but is less flexible and requires additional handling. Air freight is the fastest and very flexible, while being the most expensive method. Waterways are used to transport bulky, low-volume items that are less time-sensitive. This is the least expensive, but requires multiple handling steps and intermodal transport to be effective. Material leaves a factory and must be trucked to the shipping docks. At the other end, a similar method is used. Finally, pipelines are the ideal method for moving bulk liquids and gases. This method is used for oil, gas, and other chemicals. To optimize shipping, we meet our customer goals at the lowest cost. 
When calculating costs, remember that you own the inventory in transit. Slower methods tie up larger quantities of inventory. In general, faster is more expensive. Often, shipping is outsourced to reduce costs through economies of scale. Warehousing starts by storing inventory, but may also provide consolidation, bringing separate shipments together, and break bulk, splitting larger quantities into smaller to match customer needs. Cross-docking occurs when inbound shipments move directly to the outbound truck without stopping in the warehouse. This is ideal, but requires good coordination of shipments. Finally, warehouse operations can perform postponement. Outsourcing logistics to a third party, 3PL, can reduce inventory and cut delivery time. This is an example of leveraging the core competency of another company to support your customer. These logistics partners may provide several shipping tasks along with light assembly and customs. A common question for distribution managers is how many warehouses to maintain. Fewer sites cost less but are further away from customers on average. This is a matter of response time versus cost. Total cost includes the facility, inventory, and transportation cost. The lowest point in the total cost curve points to the answer of three locations. The last step in the analysis is to consider the revenue associated with each choice. This graph indicates that the most profit is found when four locations are considered. Reverse logistics are a reality for many businesses. Essentially, this is the flow of returned goods. Will returned goods be sold, repaired, or scrapped? A complete view of the supply chain considers standard forward logistics along with reverse logistics. The process is defined in advance. Here we see a comparison of forward and reverse logistics. Note that reverse logistics deal with more variability. With returns, one never knows what will be showing up on the dock. The SCORE model is a standardized view of supply chain processes, metrics, and best practices. The model is often used to assess the maturity of a given supply chain. Key elements include plan, source, make, deliver, and return. The definitions of these phases should be obvious. This table shows various performance attributes and associated metrics. These metrics are used to compare the operation with industry standards and best practices. Examples include perfect order fulfillment, which shows the ratio of perfect orders to total orders. Other metrics address responsiveness, agility, cost, and asset management. Benchmarking the supply chain against industry standards is a good start. Process audits may be necessary. The goal of these audits is not to fix blame, but rather to look for improvement opportunities. To be successful, trust, communication, and a common strategy are necessary for all members of the chain. The goal is for all to succeed. This table shows how typical firms compare to benchmark firms. Benchmark firms are considered to be best in class. The benchmark numbers are the goal. One issue, however, is that variation in customer expectations or product type may mean that comparison is not appropriate. This global supply chain model shows how a company can leverage the strengths and weaknesses of operations scattered across the globe. Notice the attributes above the U.S., China, and Mexico manufacturing plants and how they compare. This diversification offers an opportunity to match capabilities to customer demand. To be successful globally, a supply chain must be flexible and use the latest technology to ensure the consistent and secure transmission of business data. The team must include specialists to address unique local issues. This diagram shows an example of a successful supply chain business model. Elements of the supply chain are linked by common strategies, policies, and communication methods. This is supported by common information technology protocols and accounting policies. Notice the flow of product from left to right along with information and finances traveling in both directions. Here we see a matrix of the different supply chain functions and how they relate to the different phases within the supply chain from supplier to customer. Note the shared strategies, planning, transportation, and project management. 
Here are several companies actively using operations management to support their extensive and varied supply chain activities. Note the variety of companies providing both products and services. To be successful, members of the supply chain must demonstrate personal, business, and environmental ethics. We've pointed out that trust among business partners is essential to success. Unethical behavior will quickly lead to disintegration of the supply chain. The ethical standards listed here come from the Institute for Supply Management Principles and Standards. Notice that some obvious concerns like conflicts of interest and legal requirements are mixed with more subtle concerns like social responsibility, reciprocity, and competence. 